Today we're going to be installing a print driver on a Sharp MX6240N. What you guys are going to do first is you're going to open up a web browser and you're going to go to the website of sharpusa.com. Once you're on sharpusa.com, as you can see right here, what we're going to do is we're going to come over to the right hand side and we're going to go over to support. Under support, we have uh, product downloads under the business section. Go ahead and click on product downloads. Once you have the product downloads opened up, what you're going to do is you're going to jump, jump through a uh, series of drop down menus. First drop down menu we're going to select is going to be the product category. We're going to open that up and we're going to choose MFPs and printers. Once you have MFPs and printers selected, you're going to go into the next drop down menu and select your product category. For today's purposes, I'm going to be demonstrating a MX6240N, but whatever model you guys are using, just go ahead and select the appropriate model. Under the download type, we're going to open that up and we're going to choose driver. Under the driver platform, we're going to open this up. Now, if you are, um, you're basically you're going to be choosing your appropriate driver platform, either Mac OS or Microsoft or Linux or HP. Today's uh, demonstration is going to be for Microsoft. After that, we're going to go ahead and click search. What's going to happen now is the web page is going to display all appropriate drivers for the uh, Windows system for that particular machine. You're going to have a couple options here. We have a Windows 32-bit, a Windows 64-bit, and we also have Windows Software Option. Software Option package will include the Twain drivers, the Fax drivers, and stuff like that. But the two print drivers that you'll be paying attention to will be either the 32-bit or the 64-bit. Um, if you don't know what type of driver you're going to need, what basically what you want to do is come down to your start menu, open up your start menu, right click on computer, go to properties. Once you have the properties opened up, it's going to display the type of system you have. You can see my system right here, it says it's 64-bit. So what I'm going to be doing is downloading the 64-bit driver. Once I know my appropriate driver, I'm going to go ahead and click and then I'm going to do a save as. I like to keep everything on my desktop just to keep everything nice and clean and just so I know where everything is. So I'm going to go ahead and select desktop and if you want to change the name you can go ahead and change the name. I'm just going to name it a little different and then go ahead and click save. Once you click save, the download process is going to start. After the download is finished, what you're going to have is you're going to have the download zipped package which is going to look just like this. What you guys are going to need to do is you're going to need to right click and you're going to need to extract this. Um, I like to, again, I like to keep everything on the desktop just so I know where everything is. So basically I just right click and I go extract here. Now this is, this extract here option is going to be specific to the type of zip program that I'm using. Um, if you guys are using WinZip or 7-Zip, you may, it, the options may be a little bit different. But essentially you just want to extract your files. Once you have your files extracted, you're going to get two additional extracted files out of there. One is going to be the XPS driver and one is going to be the PCL6. You will not be using the XPS driver so you can go ahead and disregard that driver entirely. This is the driver that we're going to be using. Once this is unzipped, what we're going to do is we're going to have to unzip this one additional time. So again, right click and again, I always go extract here. I keep everything on my desktop so it's nice and clean. Once I have that extracted, it's going to give me a final install file. So what I'm going to do is once I have this extracted, I'm going to go ahead and double click and run this. And I just leave everything defaulted. Okay. 
we get a couple um, windows prompting for um, the appropriate permissions. Go ahead and select yes. What's going to happen after you select yes is the driver is going to go ahead and start to run automatically. Just waiting for my computer to refresh. Bear with me. I have my install screen stuck on another monitor. Um, just bear with me for a second. Cool. Once it uh, refreshes, like I said, it's going to go ahead and run itself automatically. Um, after it opens up, you're going to get this uh, series of options here. What we're going to do is we're going to choose a standard installation. When we click on standard installation, what it's going to do is it's going to start to browse your network and find any machine that it is compatible with. After it searches your network, you should get something that looks like this. As you can see on my network, it's found the appropriate driver uh, for the appropriate model that it can integrate with. Also found the name or IP. From here, we're going to go ahead and select next. And then what's going to happen is the driver is going to install automatically. After the driver installs automatically, we're going to get one final message. It's going to ask us to reboot. Rebooting the machine after the Sharp driver installation is not necessary. I also got an extra Windows Security. Again, anytime you get these sort of options, just click Install. It's fine. and we're just doing the final installation and again the driver pretty much just runs by itself during the installation process this is the final message that pops up after the sharp uh, software installation is complete what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to click OK and then that is pretty much it again if you get a message at the end of the driver installation that says you need to reboot your computer you absolutely do not need to reboot so don't even bother with that there will be one final step though after the driver is installed what we're going to do is we're going to come down to the start menu and we're going to go ahead and open up our devices and printers folder We're going to right click on our sharp driver and we're going to add the appropriate finishing options. So you can see my sharp drivers here. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to printer properties. I'm going to come to configuration and then I'm going to run an auto configuration. It's going to update itself now. It's going to reach out across the network. Uh, communicate with the machine and then it's going to be able to uh, tell whatever options it has available. This process takes about 30 seconds. After this is done you'll choose the appropriate options and then you'll click OK and then that's pretty much it. Depending upon your network speed and traffic and stuff like that it may take a little bit longer. and occasionally you're going to run into this but basically um, at the end of the process you should get a window that's going to point to its various options and you can go ahead and click those